One of the things that we can do is use a tool called an autocorrelation function, which actually calculates the correlation coefficient for each one of these lags in the data and then displays that in a way that will help us both understand the strength of those, auto, those correlations and how they change over time as we compare data to points further and further back in the past. So let's go ahead and do that with our data. And so let's call the ACF function and give it our time series object for NDVI and run this. And this is what an ACF graph looks like. The y-axis is that correlation coefficient that's being calculated for every single one of those time lags. And the x-axis is that lag. And so here they're being displayed a little differently. A lag of zero is a comparison of the data at time t to the data at time t. And then a lag of 0.5 is halfway through your annual cycle. And so this is actually a lag of six. And a lag of one here is actually a lag of 12. So 12 months equals one annual cycle. Each one of these bars will correspond with a different lag. So lag zero, lag one, lag two, lag three, lag four, and so on and so forth. Which is usually pretty striking to most people is this strong peak in correlation at the beginning of the graph. And of course, if we think about it, if it wasn't a strong correlation of one or a lag of zero, we should have some concerns because if we're comparing data to itself, there should be a correlation of one. This lag of one is our first real correlation that we should be paying attention to. And it's pretty strong. It's a correlation coefficient over 0.6, clearly very, very notable and worth paying attention to. It then declines and drops off very rapidly. By our lag of two, we have a much weaker correlation and then it goes negative and then it starts to peak up again at around a year. And of course, the, the year lag, especially with a, a system like this where that's very seasonal, we've seen on those NDVI data that there's a usually a very strong peak in July, for example, and that the strength of that peak or how big that peak is may vary from year to year, but the presence of a peak is almost always true. The regular seasonal cycle that goes from year to year, those you'll start to also pick up in those deeper time lags when you do this type of, of correlation coefficient. The other thing to note about this graph are these blue dashed lines. They are displaying the 95% confidence interval. And so anything above these lines is notably strong. Um, and anything within those lines is basically not distinguishable from, uh, from zero. In this case, we have a series of strong peaks that are all outside of this range. And so we definitely have autocorrelation structure in our data. Let's look at a random time series real fast and uh, see what it generates. So we have a comparison for what to expect if there's not really anything going on. And so over in our R script, I'm going to type in ACF. And this time I'm going to give it our white noise time series object. And I'm going to run that. Just like we saw with the NDVI, that first lag at zero is at a one. And then most of these peaks are well within that 95% confidence interval. What you do see is a couple of little peaks. So this one that is occurring here and this one that is occurring over here at a time lag of two, they just eke out over the that 95% confidence interval. You will expect slightly stronger correlations just by chance. Um, the rule of thumb is that if you have more than 5% of your time lags going over that uh, line, then you have uh, evidence of autocorrelation structure. But even a random time series like this, as you can see, will occasionally have, just by chance, some of these being slightly stronger than that. So what I'm going to have you do next is to do the same thing with your rodent data, and then we'll, we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, what's going on there.